Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Thursday Thoughts. Um, so I was really bad planner and coordinator this week, so um, I don't have my best friend with me this week, um, but I'm really hoping next week we get that done, make that happen. Um, and I'm hoping that we're gonna spend some time talking about um, Seven, the Seven Experiment by Jen Hatmaker is what I'm hoping. So check us out next week um, to talk about the Seven Experiment um, by Jen Hatmaker. I've talked about it before with some of you, um, and I shared it enough that my best friend took it um, and is been reading it and living it. So um, this week I thought instead we would talk a little bit about anxiety and stress and um, some techniques that you can use to help deal with anxiety and stress. We are living in a time of unknown um, and in a time where our schedules and our routines have been severely altered. And that can cause a lot of extra anxiety and stress. And that's normal. It also can bring about a lot of grief as well because we're having to let go of pictures that we had in our mind and uh, live into something different. And that's really hard. We're having to mourn the summers we thought we were gonna have, the graduations we thought we were gonna have, the, the weddings, the school trips, uh, the vacations, whatever it might be. And so grief can also bring about a lot of anxiety. Anytime there's significant change uh, in someone's life, there is an element of anxiety with that and stress with that. And right now, the entire world is having that happen at once. So when there is a significant change in someone's life, usually they have others around them who are very grounded at that moment and can help them through their anxiety. But right now, everyone's anxiety levels are high. And so it's even harder to find um, people to help ground us. And what I mean by ground us is help calm us, help bring us back to this moment. Oftentimes uh, in anxiety, our minds start to make up stories on their own. And we start to think about all of the unknowns and fill things in, or we think about all of the unknowns and we focus so much on those unknowns that our bodies and our minds just can't handle the lack of control. And right now, we don't have much control. And so I want to, to help us through that. Uh, as somebody who um, struggles with anxiety and as somebody who talks with people who struggle with anxiety in this time of heightened anxiety, I wanna offer you some techniques that you can use to help ground yourself, to help bring you back to the here and now um, to, to stop the, the stories that your mind is making, to stop the focus on the unknown and to give you something that you can control um, to help ground you and bring you back to the here and now. All of these are uh, things that, that I have practiced in my own life, whether it be during this time of COVID-19 anxiety, um, the anxiety of the adoption process, um, the anxiety of my job, Whatever it might be, these are all things I have practiced and have found helpful at different times. I don't always find all of them helpful. It depends on my mood and what's happening. Uh, and there are times where I don't find it helpful at all. And there are tons of other techniques out there that I've tried that I have not found helpful at all. So try these out. Try them one at a time. Try them a couple of times. See if they're for you. And if it doesn't work for you, if it doesn't help you, if it doesn't help bring you back, to the here and now, to ground you, to calm you, then try a different one. Uh, and keep exploring. And if none of these work for you, reach out to me because I can find you more, I can offer you more and different ones and we can talk about what parts of these maybe kind of helped, what parts didn't. Uh, I think a lot of grounding technique has to do with what kind of learner you are. So are you an auditory learner? Are you a visual learner? Are you a tactile learner? Um, I also think a lot of it has to do with love languages as well. So are you an acts of service, a gift giver, a quality time person? I think those come into play too in trying to figure out what grounding techniques work best. So I would love to have personalized conversations with you about these as well uh, so that I can hear and talk to you about what kind of learner you are, what way you learn best, and what way you best express and receive love because I think those really help into finding the right grounding technique and um, helping in um, moments of anxiety. I also wanna encourage you to not only watch this video 
um, but to share this video. And even if you don't feel you need help with um, anxiety and anxious thoughts, I encourage you to watch this anyway because you can help somebody else. Uh, you might be handling this phenomenally, but your uh, husband or wife might need some help right now. Or um, perhaps your, your um, boss is struggling or your child is struggling, uh, especially uh, kiddos right now who already don't have much control and then we've taken away their routine as well and their structure and their schedule. That brings about a lot of stress and anxiety, even if we aren't consciously realizing it. Sometimes we don't even consciously realize that our actions are because we're stressed and anxious when they are. And so just some t simple things can help um, with that. So first, let's just talk about some larger things. Getting a schedule and a routine is so helpful. So go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time, no matter what, even if you have nothing else going on that day, that can really help you. Uh, number two, make your bed in the morning. I know that sounds crazy, um, but it is something you can control. And starting your day with something you can control, completing a task right away in the day, being able to say, I did that, I can check that off my list, that gives us this element of power and control that can really help ground us for the day. So um, go to bed and wake up at the same time. Make your bed every day. Um, try and eat meals at regular times, okay? So um, in our house, we eat lunch at noon. That's when we eat lunch, we eat dinner at six. That's when we eat dinner. Um, so that there are, there are um, points in your day that you can be grounded to, that you can know this is gonna happen at this time, I can count on it. So even if everything else is crazy and chaotic that day, you can come back and say, okay, I don't know what's gonna happen in the next 15 minutes, but at noon, I am eating lunch. Uh, and, and have those points where you can ground yourself. Um, also, uh, try and be active with your body. Some form of activity with your body. If it's going for a walk, if it's running, yoga, huge, huge, huge um, to helping ground yourself. Even um, with kids especially, we do yoga with our kids. It is amazing how it helps. Um, and you can do fun yoga. Uh, most of our books, our yoga books for kids, have to, uh, animal poses in them. And so you get to be a bee and you get to buzz like the bee while you're holding the bee pose. Uh, even just doing four or five yoga poses or maybe just one yoga pose that you really like that really um, feels good for your body, that connects you back to your body is huge. So find a way to be physically active, to connect to your body. Uh, whether that um, be you know shooting hoops or um, running or riding your bike or something. Find a way to physically connect with your body. That is huge as well. So just kind of general things that we've covered so far. Go to bed and get up at the same time every day. Okay, 10 p.m. bed, 7 a.m. wake up, whatever it might be. Make your bed every morning. Start the day by a, something you can control and having completed something, having accomplished something. Uh, set points in your day that are always going to remain the same. At noon, I eat lunch every day. That way you can have those moments of grounding where you can consistently count on it. Uh, maybe it's at four o'clock every day, you're gonna call your mom or your best friend or, or whatever it might be. And then the other one that I mentioned was connect with your body physically. Um, do something that physically connects you with your body. Yoga is a great option, running, biking, shooting hoops, um, I don't know if you're a dart thrower, throwing darts. Um, here again, it's a physical motion connecting with your body. It's a repetitive action. Um, that's so, so helpful in, in these times of um, stress, anxiety, lack of control, and the unknown. So those are kind of, I guess, the, the four big things that I would say just in general for every day. Try and have these four things happen. The fifth thing that I say as a pastor and as a person of faith is connect with God every day. I'm not gonna tell you how to do that because I don't know what way best works for you, but connect with God every day. So if, you drive, if you're still driving to work 
and you have 15 minute commute or a 30 minute commute and just windshield time connecting with God, uh, reading scripture, doing the upper room daily devotional. Perhaps you have that 30 minutes and you want to sing Christian, listen to Christian radio. Some way of connecting with God every day uh, is huge as well for maintaining uh, stability and for helping fight anxiety and stress. So that was five things. Uh, I am very repetitive in this because I want to make sure you're knowing them. So I'm going to repeat them again. Go to bed at the same time every day. Get up at the same time every day. Make your bed every day. Have points in your day that are always exactly the same. I always eat lunch at noon. I always call my daughter at four. Whatever it might be so that you know every day you can count on this to happen at this time. So if the rest of the day is chaos and out of control, there's one element that you know is not never changing. Connect with your body physically. Be physically active for some period of time, even an eight minute yoga routine. I use yoga with Adrian. She has some super short ones, eight minutes, seven minutes, but they are amazing. She has a, is it an eight minute stress relief one that by the end of it, I'm asleep. Doesn't matter how anxious I was, she puts me to sleep through that video just by really calming my and connecting with my body. And then the last one is connect with God. Those are the five things every day to do to create stability, to help in this time of instability and anxiety and stress. But in moments when you're being overwhelmed, okay, so in those um, acute moments when you're feeling overwhelmed, I want to offer you some techniques there as well. And these are called grounding techniques, which are meant to bring you back to the here and now, as I said. So uh, the first one that I offer you is one that I talk about a lot. It's a breath prayer. Here you're grounding yourself with God. You're connecting back with God. Uh, my breath prayer is always exactly the same no matter what situation I'm in. It is the prayer I automatically go to. So it is, God, give me the words. So on my breath in, I'm addressing God. On my breath out, I'm offering my prayer. Oh God, give me the words. God, give me the words. And sometimes I repeat it multiple times, really focusing on my breath and my words and my connection to God. So come up with your own breath prayer. Um, on the inhale, a way you address God, whether that be gracious God, Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, however you address God on the way in. On the way out, just a short sentence. Give me the words as mine. Calm my soul. Bring me peace. Help me. Um, whatever it might be. So breath prayer. The other one I have is a scripture verse. So some of you might have had confirmation verses that you had to memorize and that was kind of your go-to verse. Some of you might have a life verse. Uh, some of you might just have a favorite scripture verse that you know by heart. This is a good way of grounding yourself as well, reciting that scripture verse. So mine is, she is clothed with strength and dignity and laughs without fear of the future. Okay, so mine not only is one I have memorized, it comes from Proverbs 31, um, but it also reminds me that I am strong, I am dignified, and I'm not afraid of the future. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. So that's mine. I repeat that to myself. I remind myself of that, um, bringing myself back to who I am as a child of God and to who God is um, as well. Okay, so those are kind of two... Um, especially spiritual religious ones. Uh, the rest of these are not. So if you are sharing these with somebody who you don't know if is religious or not, these might be some good options as well. Or if perhaps those breath prayer or the scripture verse don't work for you, try these, okay? Find one that does work for you. It doesn't have to be a breath prayer or a scripture verse. It could be something else as well. So here's some other options. Um, Five, four, three, two, one. So this one takes a little bit more time than my scripture verse or my breath prayer if I'm only doing them once, um, but sometimes I'm doing them multiple times as well. So five, four, three, two, one is to do with your senses. You have five senses. So you start with um, eyes. So I'm gonna look around the room. I'm gonna name five things that I can see, and I'm gonna really focus on five things I can see. 
I can see the green, the bright green handles on my sewing scissors. I can see the goat Joe on my kid's book on my table. I can see the polka, purple polka dots on the desk chair. I can see the composition notebook my iPad is in. I can see the Colts poster of Peyton Manning when he was playing for the Colts. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on those five things I can see around me. Then I'm gonna go to four. I'm gonna go to touch. And I'm gonna touch four different things and I'm gonna focus on them. I can feel my really soft blanket that my kids actually got for Christmas and I took. Um, I can feel my, my cold pen. Um, I can feel my, my ponytail tugging on my head. Um, I think that's three. I can feel the, the wood of the headboard, the cold, smooth wood of the headboard. Then I'm gonna go to here, three things I can hear. I can hear the aerator in our fish tank. I can hear the refrigerator that is really old and probably needs replaced. I can hear my daughter kicking in her bed. Okay, focus on three things you can hear. Then I'm gonna go to two things I can smell. Um, so sometimes um, for like my office, I keep scented chapstick in my office or scented hand sanitizer or a candle. So there are always things I could reach for and smell. So right now I can smell the, the spearmint chapstick I have on. And I can smell kind of basement smell. <laughs> that sounds lovely. And then one thing you can taste. So it's a good idea to um, have like gum in your drawer, or Tic Tacs or mints or um, a drink, you know, so I can um, taste um, the lingering taste of the beer I am drinking in my mouth. Okay, so it's five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, one thing you can taste. Now this technique you can use um, in a moment when you're when you're overwhelmed with anxiety when you're needing to to bring yourself back and to focus on what is in front of you but this is also a good technique to start your day um, before you even get out of bed if you're experiencing a lot of anxiety it's a good way to just ground yourself in that moment in that day especially if you've had anxious dreams the night before so i recommend that you um, keep like something on your bedside table, candies or gum or something so you can have that right away. Um, or when you get to taste, you get up and you go brush your teeth. Okay, that could be a, a really good way to end this. Um, and smell like uh, in, in my room, we have a candle on our bedside table. You could smell that or roll over and smell your sheets and smell the, the fabric softener, whatever it might be. But it's a good way to also start your day other than just using it in moments of overwhelming anxiety. So another um, grounding technique is to focus on your breathing. So this could be belly breathing, or I particularly like box breath, um, box breathing. So that's when you breathe in for four seconds, hold it for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, hold it for four seconds. And you're just gonna redo that cycle. In for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four, in for four. And there are lots of other breathing techniques. So belly breathing is where you put a hand on your belly and you feel your belly expanding and contracting with those deep breaths and you focus on your hand moving, okay? No matter what breath exercise you choose to do, there are some great apps as well that have you, um, like even on my Fitbit, um, it does a relax for two minutes and it tells you to be still and to take slow deep breaths and then it gives you this thing that you are gonna breathe um, so it's I'm sensing my breath right now it'll get there <laughs> it probably isn't very happy because I'm not being still and talking um, 
So now we're going to follow the, the circle to keep it sparkling. Um, so I'm going to um, inhale as far as the circle goes open. And then I'm going to exhale the whole time the circle shuts. And it's going to do this on my Fitbit for two minutes. So a lot of, um, a lot of smart smart watches, whatever, have this option. Um, you can also download apps on your phone that do the same thing with breathing techniques so that you're really focusing on your breathing. Uh, so that's box breathing. In for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four, repeat. Um, so the other one is a grounding object. And I brought mine with me. Uh, my grounding object is a prayer pocket. Um, I've had it since my first funeral um, eight years ago almost. Um, it'll be eight years in October, so seven and a half years ago. And there's a cross on the inside of it. Uh, and it is something that you hold on to. You always have it with you. You hold on to it and you really focus on it. So the time when I use my um, grounding object the most is for funerals. Um, it is sometimes so easy for me to get swept up in emotion at a funeral. I, I know the person usually, and I'm grieving the loss of the person, but I also am seeing the pain and the grief and all of the family members. And that's really hard for me. So I generally have this in my pocket at every funeral and in moments when I am struggling in my manuscript, I stop and take a deep breath and I focus really hard on this cross in my hand. So other grounding objects, um, this is this is a little um, thumbprint stone um, that I was given when I was a, a hospital chaplain, when I was working on my um, CPE chaplaincy program. And it's smooth, you focus on the smooth side of it, and then the other side's rough, focus on the rough side of it. But you can also just do any kind of small pebble or stone, a marble or um, a crystal or anything like that, focus really hard on that object in your hand. How smooth it is, how cold it is, um, how heavy it is, just really focusing on that grounding object. Um, so the last two are some distraction ones. So if um, none of these work, maybe distraction is the best technique to get your mind off of whatever is causing you that anxiety um, so that it leaves and you can refocus to what you need to be doing. So um, one of them is to find a shape or a color, to choose a shape or a color, and then to find that in the room. So um, if I were to choose the color blue, um, my, this bedspread is blue. Um, there, this bedspread is dark blue, and there's a, a light blue, baby blue shirt over there. Um, and there's kind of an electric blue book over there. Um, and there's a Colts blue poster over there. Um, and there's a, a bright blue sky over there. And there's dark blue mountains over there. And, and so you're going to name every blue thing that you see in the room. Really focusing on that room around you or every find every circle you can in the room or um, whatever it might be. The other one, if you're, this is for people, if they're number people, um, count by sevens as high as you can go or any other kind of don't do fives or tens that's not super distracting do a little bit harder of a number um one that you have to kind of think about so 7 14 21 28 35 42 49 uh 56 uh 63 70 77 uh, yeah, so you get it. I made it all the way to 77. I'm pretty sure I actually counted correctly by sevens as well. Um, so those are just, just some grounding techniques to try. I would be happy to send you information about any one of these grounding techniques. Uh, for some of them, I have like for the five, four, three, two, one, I have a cool little um, picture uh, that you can put on your desk or have on your phone uh, so that you can remember it really easily. Uh, I'd be happy to send you some suggestions of, of grounding objects or scripture verses or breath prayers or whatever it might be. Um, I'd be happy to share some yoga poses with you or some yoga videos with you. Uh, whatever it might be that you think can help you in these times of uncertainty and stress and anxiety. So 
gonna do a quick little recap. Um, five things just to do in general every day in your life. Go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time. Make your bed every morning. Have times of the day that are consistent. I always eat lunch at noon. I always call my mom at four. So that no matter what's going on in your day, you know that you can count on this time, this thing happening. Um, connect with your body. Be active. Connect with God in some way every day. Okay, so those are the five general things. And then we covered some grounding techniques. Breath prayers, scripture verses, reciting a scripture verse, a uh, life verse, whatever it might be. Uh, five, four, three, two, one, grounding technique. Five things you see, four things you touch, three things you hear, two things you smell, one thing you taste. Um, box breathing, breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, hold for four, breathe in again, repeating that. Um, a grounding object of some sort. And then distraction, shape or color you can find in the room, find all of it that you can. Counting by sevens as high as you can or by sixes or some kind of odd number, not fives or tens or twos. Those are too easy. So I just wanted to share these with you because I know it's a stressful and anxious time and I can't be with you physically to um, give you a hug, to hold your hand, to offer you a prayer in person and all of those things are things that um, I really rely on to help with my anxiety and to help when I know others are anxious as well. So I'm so sorry that I can't do that, but I hope that some of these grounding techniques, some of these just everyday life techniques might help during this time of uncertainty. And know that no matter what, there are some things you can count on. You can count on the fact that you are a beloved child of God. You can count on the fact that God is with you. And you can count on the fact that I love you and I am thinking of you and I am praying for you. So know that you are not alone in this, that it's okay to be anxious, that it's okay to reach out for help. I'm here, I would love to talk with you. Feel free to give me a call, shoot me a text, Facebook message me, comment on this video, whatever it might be. Let me know if you try out these grounding techniques. Let me know how they work for you. And if they don't work for you, reach out. I will find ones that do. We will keep trying and working on that together. I hope you're having a wonderful week. I cannot wait to see you 9 a.m. for drive-in worship on Sunday in the church parking lot. Bring your communion elements with you. Stay in your car. Tune in on your FM radio to a yet-to-be-determined station. And we will worship together just like the good old days of drive-in movies. I hope that uh, you and your family are safe and healthy. See you later.